News. Lobbyists are fed up with politicians accepting their money and then not coming through. Opinion. When the automated police force orders you inside, that's just them doing their job. Remix. Remix. Even lost my job partially due to the whole global warming issue. Increase in oil prices. This guy's scared. This is Top Story with Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. I've been a listener for about 20 years. I'm, I'm talking to you, makes me feel better. Where the news meets your opinion. Pick up the phone and talk about it. 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. Story. Speaking of sleeping on the job, this would have been one morning to sleep oh, in. Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, what would be better than sleeping in? Well, a, I'm going to do a comma. The sleeping in, comma. But when it's uh, <laughs> on a rainy day, where you have nowhere to go, and we had our leads business leads meeting this morning. You know, by the way, if anyone wants to be part of that, you need to contact me. Oh yeah, and by the way, you have a cookbook for sale too. By the way, I do. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I've been up since like 4:15 and get the coffee at 6:15, and it's pouring. And when I just left uh, downtown, uh, Shoshone and uh, what is the street? Minidoka, right across from the Depot Grill. Yeah. I mean, it is up to mid wheel. Wow. Be careful. Um, it's amazing. Some deep spots. There was a deep one on Addison just near Smith. So my, this morning it was deep. So I can't imagine it was been raining for two hours. So be careful out there. And we have some road closures. We do. And I just have to say, I think we've had over two inches of rain fall since this all started uh, here a day or two ago. Seems a lot more. That's a lot of rain. We only get two a around year. <laughs> eight to 10 inches a year. Of precipitation. In the 10 years or 11 years I've lived here, I don't remember rain this long, this hard, this long. It was pouring early this morning. I can remember. Oh, yeah. Don't go back to 1948 with a a snow drift again. It was in the early 80s. Oh, fine. 30 years ago. But seriously, this morning, it was pouring, pouring early this morning. And, uh, and well, look at they're having mudslides in Salt Lake, north of Salt Lake. These oh houses are just crumbling. And they've had, I heard from my sister-in-law last week, she said they'd had rain for a week already. Wow. And they were going to have another seven days. Well. Unusual. Back in the 80s. Oh, here we go. It uh, it rained so much, and it was right about this time. How about much time did it we rain, were, Kelly? About the time we were harvesting wheat. Uh-huh. And it rained so much that the wheat heads sprouted. Oh. The kernels in the wheat heads sprouted. And that's that's a lot the, of rain. It's not the first time that's happened either. That happened again. It was back in the late 60s, I remember. And it may have happened since. But when it rains for an extended period of time, and I don't know if this is quite long enough yet, but it was like two weeks that it just rained. This is the so. longest in a row that I remember. But, you know, it's nice. And I wish I could have slept in today. My and... lawn has never looked better. <laughs> Tom is going to be thrilled. You know, he was up in Sun Valley yesterday, and he said it did not rain up there. Oh, I Which wouldn't was, be surprised. I was surprised. And yeah. he said it just started towards the end of the day. And like, I think when he was going to dinner, but it, we, he said he couldn't believe it. He goes, really? It was pouring where you are? I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we're so amazing. getting the brunt of it. Anyway, yes, there are some closures. And let me just reiterate, folks, that um, although that sign might say 45 miles an hour or no. 35 miles yeah. an hour or even 80 miles an hour, on the interstate. By Do the way, that, that. that was pretty nice. I had to go to Boise last Friday, and that 80 was actually was kind of nice. <laughs> oh, wait, here's a news flash. Like you hadn't, didn't drive 80 before. No, I'm sorry. I, didn't. I drove 79. Stop. So anyway, uh, some closure. <laughs> um, but just because the speed limits say that this is a speed limit doesn't mean you have to go that. Because no, this you morning, can't. if you drive that the speed limit, chances are you will not make it to your destination. 
somewhere along the line, you're going to hit a puddle of water. Park Avenue. Going, yeah, and it's going to pull your car one way or the other. Hydroplane And so slow down. But Eastland, now we say closures. Uh, I don't know if these are official closures or if they... We have Where'd to be you get real, these from? We have to be careful when we say closures because... Where'd if, you get these from then? Uh, from our email. We got them from the email from other people here. Okay. Eastland Drive South under the railroad crossing near uh, Sunset Memorial Park. You know where that... The cemetery. Uh, yeah, yeah, down here by uh, near Kimberly Road where that kind of dips yeah. down, the railroad overpass. Yeah. It, it always fills up with water. So apparently that is blocked off. Uh, Canyon Springs Road down into the canyon. Apparently there was a mudslide. Really? There. Wow. So you might have to change your your jogging uh, plans for this morning if Canyon Springs Put Road your mud is normally boots on. on. Yeah, at least. Wow. Uh, the eastbound lane of Poline Road near Walmart apparently is pretty bad. Wow. Uh, North Point Drive and West Cheney Drive by Walmart. That area seems like it's higher. I'm surprised that it's so... No, uh, but you it's, never it's know. actually lower. Is water it lower? runs water runs downhill it from south to higher. north here. So yeah, it always, the seemed nor- it always seemed uh, higher to me, but anyway. And then north, we got a, a, a heads up from a listener saying that North College Road near the Nazarene Church, they said it is closed, um, I don't know, blocked off, whatever. So if you're driving that area, North College Road near the Nazarene Church, uh, all of this due to the rain. And I just have to say, they haven't announced it or anything, and they're not sure, but the organizers of Twin Falls tonight are still debating whether to cancel the concert tonight. So if Gee, you're planning on, if you're planning to go, just <laughs> you know, contact or look ahead, or or if they have a website, check it out because it, it might be canceled. Well, they canceled the National Night Out thing last night in the park. You know, well, it's the... funny. I was driving by there last night around that time, and I thought, wait, weren't they supposed to have that? But then it was pouring, so. Yeah. So, so Sergeant Dennis Pullen came out here last Friday on his day off to promote it, and then they had to cancel it. Probably first that time ever. Heartbreaking. I know for Twin Falls tonight, this would be if they did cancel it, first time in fifteen years they've oh, had really? to cancel a wow. concert. Well, so there, anyway, there you go. We have a caller, so we might have an update on how things are out there. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jill. Yes. You, uh, they don't know what rain is in this country, do they? They don't, do they? <laughs> hey, that we finally agree on another thing. I knew it would happen. <laughs> I, on safety issue, uh, a lot of drivers, I just come back from town, a lot of drivers don't have their lights on. Oh, goodness. Yep. And that's not very smart. That's right. That's a good point. And now keep your lights I, on. Uh, I have a Toyota 4Runner. When I, when I start the engine, the uh, parking lights or the clearance light, whatever you want to call them, come on. Not the headlights necessarily, but I do have lights. I always thought that was kind of a good idea. Our little Subaru Outback that we have, uh, when the engine is running, the headlights are always on on that. That's Tom's truck, so. but my car's so old, no. You actually have to turn them on. <laughs> you have to light them, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you have to get my out. My car is I... <laughs> so old, my feet go through the floorboards, and I'm like Fred Flintstone. That's old, my car is old. Yeah, but that is a good point. Drive with your headlights yes. on, slow down. It's really actually kind of bad out there this morning. You know, it is, and I'm surprised at some of the roads that there are really big pockets it's a flooding. I mean, one yeah. guy literally just stopped in the middle of the road. I didn't know what he was doing this morning. Uh, it was on Addison, and there was an opening on the left. It's like, okay, move to the left. You don't just stop. And then there was Maybe this huge... Maybe his engine flooded. No, no. Then he moved to the left. I, oh. I beat my horn, because, of course, I used to live in a big city. You always beep your horn. And then, you know, there was a big water thing. It's like, okay, dude, just get to the left and... You know, otherwise you can't see it if they just stop. Well, and yeah, just hit that's them. extremely dangerous. And you don't want to stop and skid. You don't know how slippery it's going to be. Hey, so. Oh, you can hydroplane on yeah. this very easily. Yeah. So he, so he deserved a honk horn, a, a horn honk he did. Yeah, I, I okay. did. I beeped I'm, it. I'm glad you I gave did. him I did. what he deserved. A little beep. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. You know, I'm going to wreck you. Get the hell out of the way. I'm going to hit you or the water. Isn't so. that what you just want to say sometimes? That's what the honk said. <laughs> and, That's and, like, get and over using, to the left. Using the H word is a... Is a Get to the that, left that's is using what it the said. Nice one. Yeah, get there to you, the get left. Get to the left. Okay. Do, make a decision. Don't just stop in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, be careful now we out all know there. That the, that and the, the truckers. Is wet. The truckers, be careful. Oh, absolutely. I know. Yeah, I know. and and one thing about it, like on the interstate, 
Mm. When the trucks are going that fast and they kick up that water oh, they and they, you. you go around them or they go around you, sometimes it's it's blinding for yeah. a short period of time. So yeah. I don't know. There's just all kinds of warnings out there this morning. And you know, you know, in a way, any- this is as bad or worse than snow. Yes. And also, if anyone knows of another road closure, call in and let us know so people yeah. can know. Because these were all from what? Just... Well, yeah, I don't know where they. Got, I don't know where they got them. I got an email, a mass email that we all they sent yeah. out here for us, and so I just grabbed it. They didn't say where it's from. They might be might be kidding. You know, they might not be closed. I don't think they're kidding, but they need to add another one. I think it's the Minidoka and Shoshone right across from from Depot Grill. Be careful. It was well, up to mid. Well, you can just close everything. I mean, as long as you can drive People through should it, avoid it. You, if you can, yeah, avoid it voluntarily. Yes. But if you can drive through it without. It's halfway up to their wheels already. Well, all you got to do is slow down. No, your car can to. flood. Your car can flood. My husband, my ex-husband's car literally flooded, and he had no idea how deep the, the <laughs> one more reason why we were divorced, no idea how deep the, the puddle was. He goes, I'm going to go through. I go, I don't think that's a great idea. I, you don't know. Of course he went through. Of course the car stopped. Of course the water was raising into the car. Oh, my god. Of course gosh. they had to walk and carry me out of the window. We were like one of those people on the 5 o'clock news. <laughs> of course the car flooded. <laughs> And that's when, oh no, so gosh. you can't tell how deep it is. That's why I'm saying be careful. It can happen. His car was just, his, his car was totaled. Where, where is my, <laughs> it's just how it is. Where's my music when I need it? These I'm, are just, these are I'm life, looking for the soap opera music Life experiences here. that I have. As, you should write a book, Jill, well, as, I swear. <laughs> Kelly, as the videotape, he was going to return as floating in the car. <laughs> I, I kept saying to him, I don't think you should go. Oh, no, you know, that's men. Men for you. Oh, here it is, right here. Oh, uh, well. It's right here, right here, right here. Right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the continuing no, these saga. Just, these are just life experiences. <laughs> I'm imparting my wisdom. Do not go into that puddle. You don't know how deep it is. <laughs> He had to get a new car. Oh, my. Sorry. Okay. And, and then it just always reinforced one more reason why we were divorced. <laughs> Do not drive in the puddle. <laughs> Well, Judge, I have to divorce him. He drives through mud puddles. Never listens. There's no common sense. Huh? People. Exactly. 736 is the number to call. We have coming up, we're going to be talking, there's supposed to be another race weekend at Magic Valley Speedway. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps the rain will have left us by then. I don't know. I haven't read a forecast, haven't heard a forecast. I'm waiting for an update from Jack Holland. Oh, okay, very good. And at 9 o'clock, we'll have uh, Twin Falls City Council person Suzanne Hawkins for State of the City. Mm -hmm. Give us an update on what's going on. Also, the uh, state of Idaho is um, involved, if I can find my story. I don't know what I did with the story. The state's lawyers have filed their reply briefs in their appeal of a court ruling that will, if it stands, legalize same-sex marriage in Idaho. Now, Idaho continues to fight that. The question is, is this a fight that we cannot win now? I mean, several uh, courts have decided that you cannot ban gay marriage. Uh, Idaho and several other states, as a matter of fact, are still fighting it. So is this something that's just going to cost us money? Uh, Is it something that... uh, we can't win no matter what we do on the uh, fighting it in the courts. So what do you should think? We, Although we we're going, go? we have an interview in the next five minutes. So after that, we're yeah, going to talk, we'll talk about, about it more. That think that. about it. Is it a waste of taxpayer dollars yeah. at this point? Or should we continue to fight it just on principle? 736-0300 is the number to call. We'll be right back with Magic Valley Speedway. 736-0300 is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. And you know, if you are on a feedlot or a dairy... Uh, today and have been for (laughs) as long as this rain has been going, you will know how valuable that a low and honey loader can be. You know, they could probably sell them at twice the price now and and make a killing on these, but they won't. Stanley and Company has the low and honey loader, which loads all types of manure anywhere from liquid, which is what it probably is right now, to frozen and dry. (laughs) I'm sure it's very liquid. Up to seven miles an hour. So um, this is for, you know, your larger feedlot operations Mm -hmm. and such. Uh, If you would like to see one of these in operation, as we have been telling you for quite some time, Pat Hartzell is the guy to contact at 280-1167. That's Pat Hartzell at 280-1167. He can fix you up so you can see one of these low and honey loaders in operation in real-time life. Okay. 
Okay, That's uh, Pat Hartzell of Stanley and Company. We have with us this morning Casey and Jane Sutton. They are racers. There's another race coming up this uh, Saturday at Magic Valley Speedway. And uh, now, first of all, I'm going to have to ask you, how old are you, Casey? I'm uh, 13 years old. And you're a racer? Yes. How all long right. have you been racing? Uh, two, almost three years. And Jane, how old are you? I'm 10, turning 11 in September. And how long have you been racing? Just this year. Yeah? And do you guys like it? Yeah. What are you, what are you racing? Um, I drive a, a 1989 <laughs> Pontiac Grand Am. Really? And what about you, Jane? I drive a Subaru Geo. Can you even reach everything? Is, is, <laughs> do you have to sit on something? Extend your legs? She uh, used to. She used to. <laughs> Not anymore, though. With that smile, she can probably make the car do anything she wants to. So, Jane, now you have a cast on your arm. Did you hurt that during racing? No. Oh, okay. So. All right. So, you guys, so do you two race this weekend? This no. Saturday? Not this Saturday? No. When's, when, have you, when did you last race? Uh, this last Saturday. Okay. How'd you do? I got first place in the second main, and she got third place. Did you? No kidding. Wow. So, so do you guys get nervous? Um, sometimes. <laughs> and you don't have a driver's license, right? No. Not yet. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now, I'm getting one I think summer. they should have a special deal. So if you race for a specific period of time, you should be able to get your driver's license a little sooner than normal. Don't you think that would be a good idea? Yes. I, I don't. I don't think so. No. <laughs> you don't think These so? These are children. Oh, Look at come us. on. <laughs> so how many laps did you go around? Uh, 15 laps. Wow. And do you have a pit crew and everything working with you guys? Um, my dad. Your dad. All right. Friends. Okay. Around the pit. All right. Do you know how to work on the cars yourself? Yes, if I need to. <laughs> if you need to. Jane, do you know how to? Um, sort that, of. That's what dad's for. <laughs> well, you're learning though, right? What's the most fun part of, of racing? I'd say uh, drifting around the corners. It's pretty fun. Is it? Yeah. Do you do that too, Jane? No. You don't you don't do the drifting part? No. I see. How fast do you drive, Jane? Um I don't I have no idea. They they don't have speedometers in the cars? Well, I do. I, Best I've gone is about sixty on the back stretch. Okay. All right. And Jane, you have no idea? You just put the foot down and pray. Just put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> pedal to the metal and, and, and turn play. left. <laughs> sometimes we go backwards, which is pretty fun too. You go backwards? Sometimes. Okay. That, so, that's interesting. So you drive on Blue Lakes Boulevard then, huh? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so have you guys ever gotten into wrecks or anything like that? Um, my first year, I was I had the Subaru, and uh, I was so excited. I didn't even worry about the tires, and they were, and they had like no air in them. So I hit the wall when I was turning, but I was only going like five miles an hour, so I didn't hurt. Oh wow! <laughs> Did you forget to put air in your tires? <laughs> yeah, I was just too excited. <laughs> oh, okay, so before we run out of time, the race is coming up this uh, Saturday, right, Ashley? Yes, we have um, Falls Brand Night, so it's all double mains for all the classes. Mountain Dew Late Model Double Mains, Brennan's Carpet Super Stock Double Mains, Magic Valley Pipe Straight Stock Double Mains, and Sherry's Cafe Hornet Double Mains, and then a hot dog eating contest. I know you no love way. our food eating contest. <laughs> How many people are in the hot dog eating contest, um, or is it anyone who wants to come we in? We usually do six males, six females. Six kids and six drivers. And and wow. when does that take place? Intermission. Uh, so about what time? About 7.30. So do you have to sign up ahead of time or just when you get there? We usually call people out. And then sometimes um, Falls Brand has some of their employees come and do it too, just to challenge it. What has been uh, the I record, see. Ashley? Um, I think last year someone ate six hot dogs in like a minute and a half or something. Oh, Kelly, Are you kidding? Have you ever I, seen Kelly? I ate with, that much in a snack. <laughs> with buns, too? Absolutely. Are He's you eating kidding? small children. You, you better be out there. I was like watching weekend. those professional ones here on TV a few That's, weeks ago, and they yeah. eat like 60-some hot dogs in like... 10 minutes? Oh, my something? gosh. Yeah, it's, yeah it it's made me. It made me ill just watching them. So Falls Brand is doing it. Are you going to be serving Falls Brand hot dogs for the people that come in? Absolutely. We have Falls Brand hot dogs every weekend out at the Speedway. Oh. So. And how much is it to get in this weekend? Adults are ten dollars, seniors are eight dollars, kids twelve and under free with adult, and military is always free with ID. 
Good enough. So, All Jane, right. when are you racing again? Um, next week. Next no. week? Two weeks? And, Casey, how about you? In two weeks? Yeah. Well, best of luck, you guys. Yeah, Be safe out like there. Fun. All right. Well, hey, good luck, you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time, huh? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Be careful out there. 736-0300, the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. Just wanted to remind you, rain or no, the uh, McCash for Kids will go on this evening all at right. your McDonald's uh, restaurants in Buell and all of them in Twin Falls. Uh, you've heard us talking about this, but it's a very special deal. It's, it's an annual event, and all four of our Town Square Media radio stations here, we... We go to a McDonald's restaurant. Benito and I will be at the one at uh, Washington and Addison. McChevron, they call that. Is that right? right? McChevron. I think you might have made that one up. No, actually, I didn't. I hadn't heard that before. Somebody else mentioned that, and I thought, hey, that's kind of a cool name. I'm going to use that. It's cute, So anyway, we're going to be there from 5 until 8 o'clock. You can stop by. You can go through the drive-thru window. Uh, Whatever you purchase... Uh, for your meal at uh, McDonald's during those times at any of the McDonald's restaurants in uh, Buell and Twin Falls, 25% of that will go to the South Central Community Action Partnership to help underprivileged kids purchase school supplies uh, this coming school year. Uh, they, they've they uh, been able to donate thousands of dollars in this deal for the last few years, so we want to continue with that tradition. Stop in and say hi to me and Benito I think Benito will sell you an autograph if uh, you Woody? like, and he might even donate right? some of the proceeds of that to the cause. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, he'll, he'll sell you the autograph, but, but he won't yeah. donate it. <laughs> I'm just like, kidding. You have to talk just to kidding. my agent. Just kidding. So anyway, <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll be fun. Stop by, say hi. Uh, we'll have uh, some of our other personnel at some of the other McDonald's stores, and it's kind of an internal competition. So we want to get the most, all right, at the uh, Addison and Washington store. And if you can't make it tonight, if you want to stop by today and just put in a donation, you can yes. do that. They have the things right at the counter. You don't have to order. You can just put a donation in if for That's right. you can't make it during meal time. Or even probably drive through the drive through if you wanted to and say, here, this I don't want anything. I just want to make a donation. You could probably do that, too. Have you been through drive throughs right now? I mean, I went this morning to pick up the coffee, and I thought I'll go through the drive through at uh, Moxie Java. I mean, you just you open your window. You're just like, it's drenched because they have that little roof that doesn't quite get out to your car. <laughs> so it just drips more massively into my car. I'm like, do you have any extra napkins? Like, I'm just car soaked. It's like, just beware with the drive throughs. Jeez, oh, Pete. Get a roof that covers the car. Stop. Cal, every time I say something, I have to have soap opera music. Well, These are just little nuggets of info oh, to help yes, people yes, absolutely. In life. We do Don't have, have the same experiences I've had. We do have some road closure uh, information <laughs> for you here, and we want to talk about the uh, the gay marriage uh, pursuit of Idaho. We do have a caller, so let's okay. take that top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, on this gay marriage uh, thing, you were saying that it's a done deal and there's nothing you can do about it. That defeatist attitude is why nothing can be done about all this evil that's happening in this country. What you ought to do is you ought to change your bumper music from a matter in hell and I ain't going to take it anymore. It's, it's a matter in hell, so I'm going to sit on my sorry, disgusting rear end and do nothing about it. Okay, well, I'll do when, that. When, what, what can we do? When the courts well, are you, overturning you, you these can, rulings... First off, you you can take these uh, false prophets that are uh, that have turned the word of God into a weaponized weapon against the pe- uh, against the people of God, and you can read it for what it says. There is something you can do about it. It's written that uh, he that lies with mankind is abomination. As long as you have the abomination in the land, you can't fix anything. Okay, I understand. Hey, on, I'm I'm on your side on that deal. Okay, I think marriage is between a man and a woman. But what can we do when the courts say yeah, that uh, we can't discriminate them? They have all these rights. They can marry whoever they want. Uh, what what can you and I do? You could quit buying into everything the government tells you. I don't the buy into everything they're, they're the government tells me. But what can I do? What, you stand what, against it. You you uh, you don't use guns. You get a five million men, and you walk into Washington D.C. and you take that that uh, city. And when once they fire on you, then the military has the right to defend you. They won't. They're going to they defend can't. the government. They can't. That's the thing about it. They can't do it without you acting first. Okay, but well, if I act first, I'm going to get killed. 
Okay, some of you will. Some of them got killed <laughs> in the in the first war too, the the uh, colonial war. But they won that war because they did what they did their duty, rather than saying there's nothing I can do about it. Well, you know what? You want to go? Will a... you go with me? I am not part of this evil. I, oh, I, I gave, I gave away. I, I see. Yeah, it's you. I, I can go stand on the show. front line, but you don't have to because you're not part of it. I see. Wow. That's you, you easy stand, to say. Holy in, smokes. You stand in front of I'll him. I'll stand okay? behind you. You go right ahead. <laughs> 736 the thing of it is, There's two issues. It's the civil laws. There's constitution. There's your religious belief. Two things. You're losing in civil court. The question is, should Idaho waste more taxpayer dollars fighting a losing battle, which is the federal appeals courts are overturning the bans on gay marriage? It's happened in many states. Why are we doing this? All right, and we'll be right back to discuss that here on Top Story, 736 is the number to call. Uh, have you been by Canyon Pond yet? I did see it, yes. Did you? So you well, know where yeah, it's at? it's on Shoshone Street. And, mm-hmm. So now you can drop in and say, hi, Dave Hansen. I came to see your store. Because I've never been in a pawn shop before. Well, this could be a first for you. This will be it. You yeah, should go. Right. You know what? You should go with me. We should go together. That would be fun. Yes. Yeah. We'll do lunch and go to the pawn shop. It store. is. It is kind of fun to go in there because uh, they. It's a brand new uh, pawn shop, and I. I was in there last week, and Dave showed me around. He has some really cool stuff. Now, at that time, he had a lot of stuff. Yeah. But he was still bringing stuff in. So I'm sure if I went in now, I probably wouldn't recognize the place. Aww. But a lot of it is new, still in the box. Um, he does pawns, so you can go in and get some money for a pawn, you know, and come back later and pick it up. And We'll go in. But I'll, nice I'll, I'll put your checkbook in the car. Yeah, okay. So I know what you're like. <laughs> there you go. Well, a lot of pawn stores, you know, when you go into them, they're kind of, you know, kind of dirty and you... And, I don't know. I've never been you know, in one. Like there, I said, I've never been in one. not the most pleasant places to go into. This one is different. We'll it's a go. brand new store. It's right across from uh, Will's Toyota in the building that used to be Vickers Western Store. And IQ, Body IQ, remember? And Body IQ, yeah. that's right. After that. I don't even know when yeah. Vickers was there. But it's right there on the corner. Yeah. Uh, you can't miss it. No, you can. So Canyon Pond, tell them that we sent you in. Mm-hmm. You can give them a call at 933-2600 if you're looking for something in particular. Uh, or they're also online at canyonpond.com. Mm-hmm. So 736 is the number to call. Okay, we're talking about Idaho. Uh, and we've, uh, we've talked about this before, but uh, to just kind of get you up to date, the state's lawyers have filed their reply briefs and their appeal of a court ruling that will, if it stands, legalize same-sex marriage in Idaho. Monty Neal Stewart, representing Governor Butch Otter, argues in the state... Uh, has an interest in maintaining the marriage of one man and one woman as the only legal acceptable type. But the two institutions, heterosexual and gender-neutral marriage, are profoundly different and mutually exclusive, Stewart wrote. Idaho cannot have both at the same time any more than it can sustain the social norm of monogamy while giving legal recognition to polygamous marriages. Mm. While man-woman marriage officially sustains it, genderless marriage officially retracts the social norm of a child ought to be ought to know and be raised by his or her mother or father. So uh, that's part of the argument. No, a, keep reading because this part really plucks my last nerve. Go a on. separate response from Attorney General Lawrence Wasden's office bases its argument on several Supreme Court decisions. Wasden also argues that the state has an interest in encouraging man-woman marriage, since they can have children together. That it doesn't when it comes to homosexual couples. Really. These couples are having children, whether adoption, some are, are having their own children with sperm donors, um, sperm donors having, you know, I'm sorry, there are children involved in these these unions, so that's such a false statement. And I think, I remember, I think, didn't Otter put aside, was it $2 million to fight this lawsuit of taxpayer dollars? Because we're so flush with money. Let's just raise the, the the speed limit signs. Let's put $2 million aside to fight a lawsuit that they're being overturned by state after state after state, these bans are. But let's throw our money that way. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so in our discussion over the next few minutes, keep in mind, this is not necessarily a discussion of whether it's right or wrong, gay marriage is right or wrong. It is the fact that so many of the courts are overturning yes. gay marriage bans. Yes. So should Idaho continue to pursue the ban on gay marriage using taxpayer money? Should knowing we're probably going to lose, or should we continue the fight on principle? 
So that's kind of one Waste way or the other there. Waste taxpayer dollar money or not. Like, come what sh- on. What should we do? If you were going to talk to your legislator, if you had a chance to talk to Governor Butch Otter, you would say, I don't think we should fight it because we can't win, or I think we should not fight it because I agree, or I think we should... Uh, we should uh, fight it on principle. It. Can't afford yeah, it. Can't $2 million. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, lovely Jill. Good morning. Uh, first, okay, I'll address, I'll address what you're talking right now, but let me just tell the, the, the previous caller, I feel sorry for him because he's filled with all this hatred. Seek Jesus, my friend. Say Jesus. And, um, but the, this is a colossal waste of time. A lot of waste of time, and all because he he wants to prove to the to the religious right extremists that oh yeah we're fighting. What, what is the government doing in my bedroom? Yeah. Okay. What, what? Okay. Last time I checked, Otter didn't invite me to do a monarch draw with him and his wife. So what? What? What is he doing? <laughs> getting into people's bath? Uh, you know, their bedrooms, their bathrooms. I know. Really, none of his business. Nobody's okay. business. All right. It's a waste of money. Thank you. Yeah. We, waste of time, money. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, we're going to do a poll. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay, so so don't pursue it because, well, just don't pursue it. Seven three six zero three hundred. Oh, they didn't wait. So let's see. What about this one here? Top yeah. story, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A um, couple of things. First of all, my, you know, my, my parents, I... I didn't used to think so, but as I've gotten older, I've realized how wise they are. And, Jill, a couple of things my parents told me is, you know, if your friends were all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you do that? I, I don't also, think it's the same just thing. just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. It doesn't. It's, it's con- they're, they're overturning it because it's unconstitutional, the ban on same-sex marriage. So it doesn't matter. Because it's not, everybody's no. doing we it. We have a constitution. Right, but the question is, should we should we pursue the fight? Pursue uh, well, the lawsuit. Yeah. It's a matter of principle, Kelly. Okay. You just roll over and say, okay, everybody's, everybody's doing it, so we'll just give up. That, okay. that, it's, it, it's beyond fighting. that. It's beyond you go down that. Fighting. Okay, right. so no, it's beyond that to you, Jill. What? It's $2 million of taxpayer do- of money going okay, down well, fighting for principle as opposed to does it, is okay. it unconstitutional? Answer the question. Let's, let's continue to fight it. I All know, right. but so we got that. if people are saying it, it's beyond like, oh, just it's unconstitutional, it's been found. Should Idaho but he continue said to continue? I think he knows all of that. I think he's I know, saying, but I'm we'll saying, continue to fight this based on principle. Just on principle. And that's a Let's valid just waste a, that's our taxpayer money on principle. That's a valid answer. Well, no, I know we it's part of princi- it. We fight stuff on principle all the time at the waste of taxpayers' money. So this is just, I mean. One more thing. Well, I mean, it's a valid answer. Is it for Otter's reelection? Yeah. Is it a waste of time? Absolutely, a waste of money. But we'll see what you think. Seven three six zero three hundred. It's one to one. Top story. You're on the air. Should we fight it or not? No, it's a waste of time and money. That money would be better spent on the schools or to help. Yeah. All right. Okay. There you go. Two to one. So two to one. All right. Continue down the line here as the phones continue to run over. Should we fight the gay marriage ban or uh, I'm sorry, the same sex? Should yeah. we? Should we try to fight it to uphold the same-sex marriage ban in Idaho or not? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. Um, I believe that uh, Butch Otter is using taxpayer dollars to fund his campaign. He knows this is a losing proposition. Uh, he knows the courts can overturn it. Uh, he doesn't care. He's. Uh, like I said, he's using taxpayer dollars to promote his own personal agenda that has nothing to do with laws or what's right or wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, we should not keep fighting this. We should uh, accept what it is that's going to happen. It's inevitable, and it's right. It is unconstitutional. It's a form of discrimination. And what kills me listening to these callers this morning is how angry they are, how angry they are at someone else possibly finding happiness because it doesn't fit in with their agenda or they believe that it's somehow immoral or wrong. I believe that homosexuality has been around forever, as long as there's been mankind. I think if you look back in the, uh, in the caves, you'll see drawings, uh, 
I, I just don't think there's any disputing that. I don't think this is a choice that people make. I think it's something that you're either born that way or you're not. So okay. what is, why is, why are these people so angry? That's what I want to know. All right. Thank you for the know. call. Okay, okay. So there's one. Uh, Three to do, one. Not, do not fight it. All right. Do not. Interesting stuff here. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. What are you thinking? Good morning. I think we ought to keep uh, fighting it. All right. Okay. That's all I you do. have. I think uh, that uh, it's worth the uh, money to the fight. I don't think that. Uh, you think uh, we can win? Sexual marriage is actually a marriage. It could be a union, and I'm not against that. But I don't think it's marriage. Do you think we have a, a chance of uh, beating it? Well, uh, I don't know whether there's a chance or not a chance, but I, I think we should uh, continue to fight it. I All mean, right. $2 million is a lot of money, but uh, we waste a heck of a lot of money on a lot of other stupid things, too, All that right. are probably so worse heck? than that. Let's All waste right. more. <laughs> Yeah, okay. increasing the so, speed limit. So fight it on principle. There All right. you go. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Top story, you're on the air. What are you thinking? Yes, we should fight this. It's not constitutional. It's it's animal. You know, like animals don't even do it. Thanks. Bye. All Actually, right, they thanks. have found that some animals are gay. They've they've said that. They've shown. They did. Uh, just as kind of a little rabbit trail on this thing, they they estimate the uh, the gay population in the United States at around three percent, which I thought was kind of interesting. I thought it was more than that. I don't so, know. Well, maybe seven, they're more in the closet. Maybe they've married <laughs> women maybe just to be straight for to appear straight. It happens all the time. I don't know. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top. Whoop. Well, let's see. None, none there. How about this one? Top story. You are on the air. Good morning. What good do you morning. think? Um, I would agree you have had, like, a few wise callers, not many, but um, definitely not fight it. It's not worth the money. And put it towards our education. Half of the people that are calling in, it's embarrassing when you listen to these old men, especially that one who was a total coward who said he would not even go fight, but <laughs> what a hypocrite to say to send you, Kelly, to uh, go fight. I know. I was and a little upset about that. And ranting and raving. Oh, my gosh. I thought... And then here we are. We're 50th in for education. It's yeah. a total embarrassment. So, yeah, it's a total waste of money. Whether you agree with it or not is one thing. But, yeah, come on, Idaho. <laughs> well, Let's get some perspective I here. appreciate you being concerned about my well-being. Although I yeah. can see why the guy probably <laughs> thought I think Kelly... that man should be first and we should just volunteer him to go fight. <laughs> Although I can understand he probably thinks Kelly might be a good shield. I yeah, don't know. There you go. I He'll, don't know. Yeah, that, that's right. The whole <laughs> tribe can stand behind me, I guess. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. What do you think? Good morning. Well, I think that the the gay lesbian issue is, you know, it's against God. It's immoral. But they have to answer to God for that. That's a church thing. And separation of church and state says that the state doesn't fight for things that are immoral by God. If that was the case, why don't they put the money towards men or women who cheat on their spouse? Hmm. You know, it, right. it, it, there's better places to put that money than fighting something that should be separate from the state because right. it's a church issue. All right. Thank okay. you very much. Very well said. Yeah. seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. And top story, you are on the air. What are you thinking? Hi. Uh, I, one thing nice about Idaho is um, when I moved here 10 years ago, it it seemed like it was a state that held true American values, and I, I would like to see them fight that because it's part of, you know, the true values that Idaho has, and, you know, if they pass the gay thing, then they're going to go along and pass the uh, marijuana uh, issue right after that. It seems like that's what's following uh, right after the gay issue. Yeah. Okay. So you're thinking continue to fight it on principle then? Exactly. That's right. what I think. Very good. Thanks for the call. Appreciate that. All right, so we got another caller here. Top story, you're on the air. What are you thinking? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd have to agree with one of the previous callers. Um, it, it's kind of embarrassing to hear a lot of people calling about this subject. Um, at the same time, though, I have to ask myself where people are most concerned. Is it money or is it their, the freedom of choice? Um, the previous caller mentioned, you know, this is a church's issue, and we have separation of church and state for a very specific reason, and I have to agree with that. Um, they will answer to God for whatever uh, and trespasses they've committed, if, in fact, this is considered a trespass by some. Um, some may not view it that way. Um, again, we are all entitled to our own opinions, but 
when we start valuing dollars over personal liberties, that's where I think we have have issues that start to, to come up. At least that's where I start to feel uncomfortable. So uh, what, do you think, really, what do you think we should do? Pursue I or waste of money? Well, I don't think we should put the money towards it, yeah. um, right. fighting it, just because, uh, again, um, the agendas seem to play out across the nation. Um, you know, the caller mentioned, hey, if everybody's jumping off a bridge, would you want to do it too? Um, this is a little bit different than jumping off of a bridge. I, um, I don't think it's able to be categorized so uh, black and white. Um, All right. Well, hey, I got to let you go so okay, we can get the six count to, here. Six to four. Six to four. How? Waste of money. Six to four. Saying call it's the waste governor's of money. office. Right. Call Lawrence Wasden's <laughs> office. Seriously, call him and tell him. Very waste of money. Stop using taxpayers' dollars to help your campaign. Thanks for your input on it. And coming up <laughs> next hour, we will have uh, Twin Falls City Council person Suzanne Hawkins with State of the City here on Top Story. And welcome back to Top Story. 7360300 is always the number to call. You know what? We'll just get right to it. There are a lot of things going on this morning because of the weather. Yeah. Uh, we also have Twin Falls City Council person uh, uh, Suzanne Hawkins with the uh, uh, also Lori Race from the city. We were going to talk yeah. uh, from uh, budget uh, issues this morning and some other stuff. But due to the rain, we do have some things that are going on around the area. For instance, the roads uh, are apparently somewhat flooded around St. Luke's Hospital, so be careful mm-hmm. in that area. Uh, the closures that we have here, uh, I don't i don't know if they're closures, just avoid these areas, okay? Eastland Drive South under the railroad uh, crossing near the cemetery where the railroad goes over Eastland Drive South. Uh, apparently that's filling up with water. Canyon Springs Road down to the canyon. Uh, there was a mudslide, and we have Benito Baeza standing by to give us a report on that. Uh, the eastbound lane, a pole line near Walmart, which would be uh, one of the ones near the hospital. North Point Drive and West Cheney Drive by Walmart. North College Road near the Nazarene Church. Uh, avoid that area. And uh, parts of the parking lot at St. Luke's Medical Center, I guess, have been flooded. They're still getting people in in other entrances. but uh, And they'll have, I'm sure, signs up and such down there. But just, just realize when you go out today, there are probably going to be maybe some detours and some... Uh, you know, going to have to, you can't get there from here. You know, that type of thing. Well, we got two more closures, Cal. Uh, Rock Creek Park, uh, there's been a mudslide, and the Rock Creek RV Park has lost a retaining wall. Oh, my so goodness. So those two places right. are closed today at least. So now, we haven't heard of anybody being hurt yet. I hope so, not. Hopefully. Now, there has been a big mudslide, I guess, uh, down by the uh, uh, Canyon Crest uh, uh, Dining Center. and Event Center. Uh, it, it was not heard, but the... The trail area in there, I guess, quite a big mudslide. And we have Benito Baeza with us uh, to talk about that. Benito, what's going on? Uh, good morning. Uh, there was a considerable considerable amount of uh, debris and uh, dirt that uh, just pretty much came off the side of the canyon, just there below uh, Canyon Crest. It actually took part, uh, took out part of the the uh, walking trail. They have it blocked off. Um, wow. You're literally, you take a step to the right, and you're you're on Canyon Crest on their walkway. Um, a lot of debris just flowed down across below onto the uh, the golf course down there, too. Um, a lot of dirt has moved, uh, and a lot of water has moved it. Uh, talk to police chief. He says just everybody use caution if you're in the area along the canyon. Um, they're assessing the damage. Right now they do have Canyon Springs Road closed. Uh, they won't let anybody go down there except for workers that work out at the sewage plant or that are working down at the uh, uh, at the park down there. So right now, that, that grade is closed. They're assessing the damage and how to go forward. And if you actually go down the grade, you'll see a number of uh, good-sized rocks about the size of maybe coolers, uh, ice chests uh, that have fallen off onto the roadway. So at this time, it's still passable. Uh, they were able to clear the mud from down below Canyon Crest on the road next to the golf course. But uh, this time, they're going to leave it closed. They're not sure they're going to uh, open it up. Uh, so no golfing and no access to, uh, to the park, uh, at least for a little while. Oh, wow. And of oh. course, uh, however long it rains depends on how long this is going to last, I'm sure. Right. National Weather Service is calling for at least an 80% chance of rain just for today. We'll see a little bit more tomorrow, too. So I don't think the rain's done just yet. Hopefully the, the large amount of it flowing across our streets will be. So as you are looking into the weather, uh, what's the weekend? Is it going to clear up for the weekend, or weekend do we know look, yet? Yeah, weekend looked like it was uh, ready to clear. We'll see temperatures uh, dr- Pick back up into the 80s. We'll see sunny skies. Uh, so looks like it'll dry out uh, starting Friday. 
Okay, good. So, so good. Then uh, just kind of repeat uh, the uh, the the uh, walking trail there next to uh, Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center has kind of been washed away. Then, yes, it has. Pretty much half of it for about a twelve foot uh, um, uh, uh, piece of it has just uh, fallen into the ground. It flowed that, and then it flowed off the canyon. And down below the canyon, a large amount of dirt came off the side uh, of the canyon. They were exposed to a lot of the boulders that sit underneath that dirt and just pretty much went across the golf course and on into the Snake River. If you look down from the top of the canyon, you can see there's a, a point where the river is its normal color, and then below that is just muddy water. Oh, wow. So uh, there's been a lot of water. The, the falls there that uh, flowed next to the grade, they are just running like crazy. Um oh. So a lot of water on the streets also. Be careful if you're in the, the right lane and traveling, especially if there's a little bit of a just kind of a slope. Uh, there's a lot of water. Yeah. could be a lot of water in some areas, especially in Twin. Uh, just be careful while you're going across it. And if you're not sure about it, don't cross that water. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And yes, right. uh, I heard that there are unconfirmed reports that uh, St. Luke's is dealing with a lot of water right now. Uh, you know, they do have a basement and several levels below. So yeah. uh, they're having to deal with that right now. Um, haven't been able to talk to their officials yet, but uh, okay. I've heard that uh, yeah, that's the case. So, all right. Well, thanks, well, thanks Benito. Benito. Be careful. Yeah, if you have any updates, let us know. Will do. All right. All right. Thank you. And I, I did get an, Yeah, I did get an update. Uh, Twin Falls tonight concert has been canceled. They're going to reschedule for next week, the twentieth. So. Okay. Uh, it almost says like really like you think about the con- but you know it was scheduled for tonight and it's been canceled. Yeah. All right. Now we have Twin Falls City Council person Suzanne Hawkins with us this morning and. You uh, also, you got an update from city manager Travis Rothweiner on some of the conditions. Anything that we haven't talked about yet? Just a quick update um, to make sure all the citizens know that our water system and our wastewater system are stable and working normally. Even though our wastewater treatment plant is at capacity, that is for including will serve, so there was some room. Um, The crews and the staff that work down there are working around the clock to make sure that we keep up with the flows it's something they're trained for with the ebbs and tides of the wastewater treatment plant. So right now, all systems look good down there. I don't know if you can address this or not, but it's kind of been a, a traditional problem in Twin Falls. Whenever we get a lot of rain, we get flooding in the streets. And apparently our drainage system is just not able to handle that. Or Have you ever talked about that? You know, I don't know that we've discussed that in detail. I know that we are gearing up to look at stormwater runoff issues in the city, mostly due to the... Um, federal mandates that are getting ready to come down oh. on how we deal with those issues. If we're 50,000, right? When, when we when hit 50,000. But right yeah. now, you know, you, you have to look at the cost versus how often do we get these kind of rain here. And so our system is designed for what is typical. And you really can't invest millions in what could possibly happen all the time. So it's kind of yeah. that trade-off. You know, you have to you have to be reasonable. And but our we're system ha- is reasonable for the amount of water we get in a year. But, yeah. Suzanne, it, when we hit 50000 we have to, right? There's Correct. no choice. There so, are changes. Yeah, there are coming. changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to be spending a lot of money here in the future, aren't we? Yeah, most likely. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Speaking that, of that's money. That's why Lori Race is here to talk money. I know, I was going to say, right. speaking of money. <laughs> we'll just slide right in there. Uh, so how uh, so how are we doing? Now, the Monday night at the city council, the council set the maximum amount that can be, uh, that the budget can be, it can go less, but it can't go more. What That was what, 57 million? million. Yeah. That's I mean, let me turn your. Lori, what's your title in case people aren't familiar with you? Because you are on here a lot. I'm the CFO for the city. Okay, great. Oh, okay. So you said I I didn't get your mic turned up in time. How much was it again? Fifty-seven million. Okay. How much is that overall budget uh, as compared to the current budget? So it's about a four million dollar increase, and and I'm using round numbers, no sense in getting into point three cents, but. but there are a lot of different revenue sources. So we're looking at lots of grant opportunities. So not all those dollars will be coming from our citizens. In fact, the increase to the citizens for property taxes and their utility bills is really quite small. So Lori, when I, cause I, I hear that a lot. Well, we have a grant for this. We're, we're applied for a grant. What if we don't get the grant? Then so, what happens? Are, have these already been confirmed or are they just like just applied for? So um, we're looking at getting a grant for um, what we call our aerial fire truck. And it's it's time to start looking at replacing that. But if we do not get that grant, we will not proceed with with um, purchasing that new truck at this time. 
Okay, okay. so. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, that kind of. I mean, that's kind of because you hear that a lot. That, yeah. Like, oh, we have a, you know, we applied for grants. It's like, yeah, but you don't always get all the grants. And then that's we just right. saw yeah. that um, South Central Health, they lost their grant after 30 years. So yeah. it does affect a city. So based on this budget, how much was um, dependent on grants? I want to say about, um, just off the top of my yeah. head, about $1.4, $1.5 million. And most of those were for capital improvements, such as this fire truck and uh, self-contained breathing apparatus in the fire department. Okay. So of the other part of the increase, then, where did that come from? The, the If you take away the grants? The $56 million. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, the 55 and a half to $56 yeah. million. Is that that is higher than the current budget, right? That is, and okay. and that four million dollars, four point one million dollars, is the entire budget, not just the property tax portion. So we obviously have water funds and sewer funds and sanitation funds. Okay. So so there are capital things occurring in all of those different funds. I guess what I'm getting at is what is the bottom line as far as the increase that will come out of the taxpayers' money? Can I weigh in real quick? Sure, absolutely. So part of that increase also is a growth formula because as we're growing and we collect more property tax, that also adds into that. So new payers are adding to some of those fees as well, just just kind of as a FYI. And rates are going up. So do you want to tell people what you guys have decided? Sure. So... We start our budget process very early, and we use the best information we have available at the time. And as we move on, we get better information, and we refine our revenue estimates, or we make adjustments to spending. And at this time, we're only looking at asking um, the taxpayers, we'll be getting the growth formula, and only about a 0.76% in what we got this year. The statutory maximum we can take is 3%. So we'll be adding to what's called our foregone balance, uh, about $386,000 to our foregone balance, dollars that we could have taxed the citizens for but did not. Um, we'd like to do some comparisons to figure out what, what the citizen, average citizen's paying now and what it will cost them next year. And based on an Uh, an average medium home value of $144,300, the average citizen would be paying $5.08 more in property taxes for the year. Okay. We're looking at it. That's pretty cheap. It is. (laughs) We're looking at a 2% increase in water rates, a 1% increase in uh, sewer rates, and a 1.11% increase in sanitation. So overall, if you add up the increase in property taxes and the utility rates, uh, it's it's less than twenty dollars a year, or about a dollar sixty-two per month. Okay, how does that, just out of curiosity, compare with some of the other cities in Idaho that are of comparable size? Well, you know, I, I spend a lot of time looking at the city of Twin Falls information, and I can only tell you that recently. Um, I've been learning some information about what other cities charge for water rates, and we are way below. That's what I understand. Even some of the little local towns Mm -hmm. that are way above us in the the water rates. Mm -hmm. So I I suppose various reasons for that. But Okay, well, interesting stuff. We have uh, Lori Race with us, who's the CFO for the city of Twin Falls. We have uh, Suzanne Hawkins on the Twin Falls City Council. We'll be right back. 7360300 is the number to call. 7360300 Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call. Busy morning it has been. I know it. It's still raining. Still raining. There's still um, a flood watch out. Yeah, the uh, mudslide the Benito Baeza talked about here a bit ago there near the uh, Canyon Crest Event Center. The the Canyon Crest was not affected at all. Just anyway, the walking she, right? trail. Just the walking trail there. And then there's been uh, uh, some closures, some uh, detours around town because of the weather. Uh Rock Creek Park and the RV Park at Rock Creek are both closed. Okay. So the RV Park lost a retaining wall. Wow. Yeah. Interesting stuff. All right. So as you're out there driving around, drive carefully. Be careful. You don't have to drive the speed limit just because it says 35 or 45. Right. In fact, that would be the wrong thing to do Mm -hmm. uh, when it's doing this. So uh, yesterday's $100 instant winning name is Billy Taylor. Billy Taylor, congratulations. And your $100 word of the day for today is burger. 
Burger. B U R G E R. Burger. Go to our website at newsradio1310.com, click on word of the day, type in burger, and you could be a $100 instant winner just like that. We got a caller. Let's uh, go to the phones. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like to uh, stress to people I'm former law enforcement and from years back, fire service. If there's water across the roadway, do not drive through it. Every year people do. Their cars get drowned. They get washed away. People die, and it's needless. Water refracts light different, so it may not look deep, and it's actually deeper than what it really is. So if there's barricades, don't go around them. If there's water on the roadway, take an alternate route. Stay away from the water with your cars. All right. Yeah, yeah some good advice there, too. So. I told you that. I said that's what happened. Yeah. You laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's car got totally... Oh, my gosh. Here Not we go Tom. again. Here, no, stop, here, here stop, we go again. Stop, stop, Don't, don't, don't. These are pearls of wisdom. Yes, pearls absolutely. Of wisdom. You're going to start charging for these I, soon. Exactly. I have to live through all of it to tell you guys not to do these things. <laughs> What well, not to do? We have Twin Falls City Council person Suzanne Hawkins with us this morning and the city CFO, uh, Lori Race. Um, at the meeting Monday night, we annexed another 54 acres off of Hankins Road into the city. Tell us about that. We did. The area we annexed was um, already butted up against city property, which is what we have to look at, first of all. Um, secondly, it was already zoned to be a legal zoning to add a school and residence in that area. Um, with the school bond issue passing, the school has three new buildings they're getting ready to build, and this is for one of them. They are planning on using, I've heard, between 10 and 12 acres for the elementary school, and the rest they will develop later. Um, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either annex the property first and then come back and go through all of the other zoning changes that need to be made, or you can go to the comprehensive plan and have it altered first and then go through the annexation and go that way. Both ways are perfectly legal. Um, it's the applicant's choice how they would like to proceed, and this was their choice when they brought it before council. The area in the acreage that they've decided is the safest place to put the school is on the far end of the 50 acres. So that's one another reason why we needed to annex the whole chunk and not just 10 acres. Um, otherwise, they would be forced to build the school right up on Hankins Road, and we do not want that. Oh, Why, okay. That's what I wasn't sure. Why not have two accesses to the to Hankins Road and to a stadium to have two entrances for the school? That you know, didn't seem to make sense. You know, that's their preliminary thought process on it. Nothing in that line has been decided. This was strictly whether or not to annex the land so they could build a school out there and have city services. That was the only decision that was made. Nothing else has been drawn up or is concrete. They're working on those plans, and that is their initial thought going forward, but everything is subject to change. Nothing has come in a formal meeting yet to be established. So the interesting thing about that is this area is outside the water boundary for Correct. the city of Twin, which they have a water boundary because so you don't go beyond the water boundary for the city of Twin. And um, being on the comp committee back in 2008, the comp plan, you know, was, was drafted by many people for over months. You know, it seems to me, I, I guess I was a little disturbed that it was annexed prior to changing the comp plan because the comp plan should dictate. But how does the city justify going beyond the water boundary when that's what they have is a water boundary? Both ways are perfectly legal to proceed. Um, with the water boundary, you know that we are to discourage that growth past that. But we're at a point where the city is growing. We are going to have to expand where it's already been zoned for those kind of uses and where it's already um, located next to the city. It is it is a legal decision to go ahead and annex it and then come back and review the comp plan and extend those water boundaries. So, okay. So the city will have enough water. No, so they can just keep sprawling, which, you know, really wasn't part of the strategic plan. I mean, it was against urban sprawl. So how can people feel assured like... You know, it's not just all going to be urban sprawl. Well, I guess, you know, it depends. There's different opinions looking at it. I don't think that an elementary school I would classify as urban sprawl. The it's the 43 needed. acres that will be developed as urban sprawl. Correct. Yeah. But none of that has been approved yet, so there's no guarantee that that is going to go that direction. But I mean, that's coming down the road. So they could keep so, zoning as agricultural in that area? 
it's not zoned as agricultural. Well, in the comp plan it's laid out, but the zoning is residential in that area. So which one wins, so it the could, zoning or the comp plan? It could be residential um, even without annexing it because that's what the area of impact has it labeled at and the county plan does. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I would have to ask Fritz, but we were told that annexing it is completely illegal and it is a okay method to annex it before you go we'll to the We'll be right plan. back. 7360300 is the number to call here on Top Story this morning. And the folks at uh, Farmore of Idaho want you to know that when it's not raining like this, they can make overflights of your fields. And you might <laughs> you might have an irrigation system that you think is just doing a a really great job, but once they fly over some of these fields and they take pictures with infrared photography, you can see where your irrigation system might be lacking. There might be a lot more dry spots than you thought. Uh, so if you would talk to the folks at Farmore of Idaho, they can arrange to have your fields overflown, take the picture with infrared photography. This is not all that expensive, uh, and it doesn't cost. It pays. You can make adjustments to your irrigation system. You can increase your yield. You can more than pay for it. It's just the right thing to do. So get a hold of them at Farmore of Idaho at uh, 324-3341, and they can help you out. Uh, we have uh, Twin Falls City CFO Lori Race and Twin Falls City Council Person uh, Suzanne Hawkins with us this morning. We got a caller. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I'd just like to say I agree with Jill. She's right. Oh. This is, perfect, this is a perfect example of what happens to every city council person. They keep saying growth is good, growth is good. They went against the comp plan. An elementary school might not may not be urban sprawl. However, it's a support system for urban sprawl. And it's the same old story. You never say no. You never say, nope, let's have smart growth. Let's just have growth. I've said my two cents. I'm going to vote against you. Well, I appreciate you calling in. So what do you, uh, there, he's, he's not alone. I know there are a lot of people who think that growth is not necessarily good. So, you know, where do you draw the line? I know, that's kind of a rhetorical question, I guess, because it depends on who you're talking to. But. That is correct. And we do try to include public input in all of our decision making. And we had one person show up Monday night to yeah. speak to us and they were in favor of it. So it's really hard when we don't hear that feedback before the decision's made. Yeah. It was interesting because the person who showed up, and I, I didn't know this, is that you could annex your, if, if the city's annexing you, you can exempt out of being annexed with it because his home was exempt. He was the one who was exempted out. I didn't know you could do that. I thought the whole area would have to be annexed if the owner agrees to it. Am I wrong? Well, he owned private property in the that was next to that area, but it was not in the school district's area. No, but in the other, the whole area that was annexed in the 53 acres, because right. I wanted to ask this, but I felt like since I didn't live in Twin, I didn't think oh, I really had a right no, to do it. you can always ask. But anyway, um, because the house, it was exempt out of the 53 acres, and to me, I thought if you're in those acres, no matter what's in there, you're now annexed as part of the city. Is that not true? So if if okay, the fifty three acres did not include his property, though. No, it did. It did. He was annexed out. It was a red line around right. his house. He was in that area. But the fifty three acres that we annexed did not include his private property. That was another. I think it was about an acre in there. So if we would have annexed the whole thing, it would have been fifty four acres. No, I know. I'm saying he was he was exempted out. I didn't know you could exempt mm -hmm. out if you're if you're surrounded because the whole block was surrounded. I, I, I was wondering, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm wondering if, if Kimberly annexed, you know, do either Kimberly or Twin, could those homeowners annex be exempt out of that annexation? I didn't think they could. We can force somebody to be annexed, but that is not our policy. And where he did not apply or want to be, we do not force annexation. Hmm. Okay. So you can be exempted from being annexed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was interesting. Well, interesting then, I stuff. Something, yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. Well, you don't know these things, things and That's you think, right. "Wow, you know, we could be annexed any minute." And you it just is know what your rights though, are. And I know what you're saying. When uh, I know that every time a city council person comes on, you want people to show up to these meetings, and then one or none show up, and then right. they complain. I, uh, and that's never made sense to me. Public hearings never start before 6 p.m. So we try to be sensitive to work hours. Um, the public hearings this week didn't start until almost seven. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we, we try to make sure we give people, I know Mayor Hall asked at least three times in the meeting Monday night for public comment. 
Yeah, and I know you're easy to get a hold of via email and such like that. So. But then just because you anyway. show up doesn't mean it goes your way because those people no. from the apartments showed up for Mr. Gas and they, you know, and that, that was that a special correct. use permit and those, you know, it was turned down. So, I mean, it was, I guess, given the go, the red, the go, the green light for Mr. Gas and they all showed up. So it doesn't mean just because you show up that correct. it's going to yeah, go your but way. At, but at least you have a say. I mean, at least well, you, you can, think, yeah. At any rate, uh, that kind of leads us into the next one. That's the height limitation, raising from 35 to 50 feet? Correct. Is that going to happen? Um, it is moving forward. We are working on an ordinance to do that. The reason we've had the 35-foot limit is due to our ability for fire suppression. But as we've grown and our equipment's grown, we now have the water capacity. We have the trucks with the ladders. That we 50, 50 feet is very safe now for fire. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think that that was for aesthetics, but it wasn't. It, it was, was not. It trucks. was it was because of fire limitations. I mean, yeah. if you look around Twin now, we have some larger buildings. We have the hospital, and we are equipped to take care of those situations yeah. now. But you guys only have one ladder truck, and Correct. you're hoping you'll get a second one, right, Lori? Uh, we're uh, heading in that direction to get another one. Right. Mm -hmm. So right, right now we just have one. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. We'll be right back here on Top Story. <laughs> Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. We have a Twin Falls Chief Financial Officer Lori Race and Twin Falls City Council Person uh, Suzanne Hawkins with us, kind of going through some of the uh, things that the City Council has been doing here of late, and uh, now we're talking about impact fees. Are we going to be Collecting more, making them higher. What's going to happen with impact fees? And and first of all, what are they? And who's when impacted? Talk, and who's impacted? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so impact fees are a fee that the developer pays. Um, we have uh, capital improvement projects that are specifically identified as growth related. And so as these fees are collected, they're set aside in different pots to go towards the purchase of capital projects or things associated with growth. And so the developer is the one paying those costs. Okay, then, which is passed on to the sure to the buyer. Yeah, that's just the way business works. So why did okay. they go up? You said you were on the committee for that. So they take a look every year. They they review that. The committee is made up of developers and realtors and um, business folks in the community. And they try to, you know, the, the cost of those capital projects are going up and they try to, you know, keep track of, of, um, just keep pace with those types of things. And so I think, I think it went up uh, close to the municipal cost index is what that increased. Okay. Which is, so you're talking, you got to do lay speak oh, here. Yeah, that's, that's, right. Glory. that's right. <laughs> so, so talking that's... a bunch of third graders here. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a, an index, an economic index that was created by uh, American counties and cities. And it says how much it costs increase for um, governments doing business. Okay. So it's pretty specific to government. Okay. Is there a formula uh, that you, they use? or Probably. Okay. <laughs> and you're saying you don't know what it is, No, right? <laughs> I just get the number. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Now, uh we got some changes in parking rules? We do. We have been updating our zone and ordinances, um, going through our, making sure everything we do is up to date. Um, so we are looking at how much um, landscaping has to be done in parking lots to break up some of that sea of asphalt that you see in the larger parking lots, as well as how many parking spaces different types of businesses and residences need to provide. And I think the biggest difference we found is in restaurants. Um, before eateries were all categorized together, now restaurants with drive throughs are separated out from restaurants that are just seat facility. And before we used to do a per seat type formula, which we found didn't really work because you could change the amount of tables inside. So now we're going based off of square footage. And so restaurants will probably have to provide a little more parking than they did in the past, but it's a it's a more equitable way of assigning those numbers. Okay. So when you say landscaping in the parking, because when we first heard about this, we sort of um, mocked it a bit, didn't we, Kelly? We did just a little bit. Just, just a titch. A <laughs> but um, because we were saying, you know, and, and I was at the city council meeting, Chris, talking to how reminded that we are in a desert. And I think mm -hmm. some of the landscaping in these parkings like, required like a four-foot tree, or there was definitely plants involved in this. 
why have the plants and you know because of the water shortage as we grow you know to put water into a into landscaping for a and we're parking saying all lot. this as we're drowning from the rain <laughs> right but you know so right. unusual but why right. not escaping or things where you don't have live plants we are updating those codes as well Lori's eyebrows went up you know we're yeah. on video <laughs> <laughs> um, we're updating what our landscape, landscaping codes are as well. So some of that will be changing. But like, for example, the trees is to break up some shade and to give some relief to some of the heat we get in the summer out there. So, you know, there's a lot of things. We looked at a lot of parking lots in Twin Falls. And really the closest we could come to what we want our codes to be would be St. Luke's Hospital, where, the way they have designed their parking lot to um, for yeah. best access. So that's kind of the direction we're looking. Not necessarily that it's all going to be trees and water taking. You know, but you know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. yeah, and that's it seems why, like, so we're working through more. all these chapters one at a time, and landscaping is one of the next ones to come up. So, what's the timeline on this? So, how can people For have the input? Parking, yeah. yeah. Um, we at, directed city staff to. Um, prepare an ordinance for us that we will be looking at, I believe, next week. And so we will be, if you have a comment or a thought on it, next Monday night at 6 o'clock would be the time to be there. Okay, so this is moving along then. It's, it is. It, a... We've been working on it for over a year. Oh, it might okay. seem like we're working on it, and we have asked for public input, and we have sent out, you know, on our website, through emails, different places, asking people to please Give us feedback on this. So yeah. this is going to affect going. business owners. I mean, because right. it really depends on the size. And this could add a significant amount, you know, landscaping or even a berm in your mm -hmm. parking lot. Um, that can add a, a, a big cost. So if does it go to retroactively to no. businesses? So any future oh, businesses. Okay. It is for future business. And if a business wants to expand, then it could affect them. So business owners need to come and look yeah, at this because it's going to affect your bottom line. Yeah, Definitely. That's right. And the meeting is when? Monday night. Okay, Six it's the regular uh, city council yes, meeting? Yes, yep. Okay. Six right, o'clock. Very good. Well, All right, anything, we got how many seconds left? Well, we've got just a few seconds left, <laughs> but uh, this is the first time that Lori has been on the show. We want to welcome her here. And, Thanks, uh, Lori. Hopefully you yeah, didn't I, think I, it was a bad experience. <laughs> no, not for me. It was great. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm always enamored of people who can work these numbers in their head, you know, and have all these figures at the top of their head. You ask them a question. Oh, yeah, that's such and such and such. Because our calculator is always broken. That's right, right yeah. <laughs> Real quick, if I can tell you, Lori is the best. She puts together a budget that's easy to read and understand. And this year, I think she's worked really hard on um, – being accurate. We've looked at some costs that we've had before that probably we've budgeted so much but haven't been accurate as to what we're spending. We're out of time. We're out of time. Thank you. Okay, time for the you, guys. Report. you can hear the Huckabee Report <laughs> each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed, Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger, financial advisors. And the number is 736 6563. We got a lot of stuff to cover here in just a few moments. What were you going to talk about? Road closures, Twin okay, Falls tonight, concert cl closed tonight. It's going to be, excuse me, next week. And we have so many road closures. Do the uh, National Night Out, uh, which was canceled last night, has been rescheduled apparently for next Tuesday. Yep. So if you were looking forward to that, uh, avoid these areas. Eastland Drive South under the railroad crossing near uh, Sunset Memorial Park. Canyon Springs down to the canyon. There was a mudslide there. Our own uh, news director, Benito Baeza, reported on that. Nobody has been hurt, but there was a pretty good chunk of the canyon wall and the walking trail yes. that ended up at, at the bottom of the canyon because yeah. of the water we've been getting. Uh, all of the roads down and around St. Luke's uh, Regional Medical Center right around in that area are uh, water covered, so please be careful. Apparently, St. Luke's itself is having a few issues with the basement and uh, some other areas below surface level, and they'll have some signs there telling you where you can go in and where you can't. North Point Drive and West Cheney Drive uh, by Walmart. Uh, avoid that area if you can. North College Road near the Nazarene Church. Um, all kinds of uh, issues going on this morning because of all the rain we've had. New update. Reports are coming in that the canal at, the C at CSI is overflowing. Rock Creek Park is closed. Rock Creek RV Park lost its retaining wall. So be the careful. The canal of which you speak would probably be, uh, what are they called? Perrine Cooley. I have no probably idea. That's Perrine just what I'm, I think that's I'm the only reading. one that goes through there. But, uh, Whatever, it's a coolie. I, I think it was Travis Rothweiler who told Suzanne Hawkins that 
that where it, where Perrine Cooley drops into the canyon looked like Shoshone Falls today. So mm. there's got there is a lot of water out there, and it's apparently still coming down. I don't know if it's raining at this very moment or not. But if We're you're just out stuck traveling, in the studio. Yeah, that's right, with no windows. I hope we can get out. Yeah, to bring that up in our next contract discussion. We want windows in the control room. But at any rate... Uh, oh, the Weather Service has issued a full-on flood warning for the Magic Valley through 11 a.m. Okay, so well, more we're hour. just an hour away. If we can put up this an hour, another hour, that should be gone, unless they extend it. So anyway, be uh, careful drive of carefully. anything that goes down. <laughs> Slow down. You don't have to drive the speed limit, and if you do, you'll probably be in trouble. Drive in the inside lane, right next to the the right the and cutoff dri- line, and drive with your headlights on. That will help oncoming vehicles see you coming. And do not go through a puddle. It's deceiving. You could lose your car. <laughs> Experience noted. Yeah. So now that you've been duly warned, have a safe day. <laughs> yeah. Have a good day. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow right here on Top Story. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal.